So, a little bit about how the story started and how it came about planes. So, um, first of all, you know, I have a background in aviation. My father was a pilot, his father was a pilot. I grew up loving aviation as a kid my whole life. In fact, I'd go out with my dad and he'd talk about the planes and I would sketch right along. Um, and then, you know, one day uh, John Lasseter had an epiphany. He was flying in from Pixar to Burbank and he gave me a call on the telephone and he asked me, he said like, hey Clay, I know you're working on one little project over here, but what do you think about uh, doing a movie planes and let's make it from above the world of cars. And that's kind of how it all sort of started. And who's Dusty? Dusty is the hero in our movie and what's pretty cool about him, what I love about him is he's sort of this small town guy at first. He starts off, um, you know, as a, he's a crop duster and he kind of does the same thing. He goes back and forth all day long and he's flown thousands of miles but he's never really flown anywhere. And then he gets the opportunity, the chance of a lifetime. And it really, it really plays into sort of the theme of the movie also where, you know, you're sort of built one way, but um, deep down he feels like he's capable of doing more. And when he gets this chance to actually compete in this uh, race around the world, he goes for it. So how has your love of aviation, your family's history with aviation, influenced this story? Yeah, I think uh, my family's history of sort of living and breathing aviation through my father, through my grandfather, growing up around planes my whole life, it's influenced the movie in many, many ways. First of all, I've already come in with sort of a critical eye on how planes sort of look. I was familiar with many different types of aircraft and shapes of aircraft, so I, I could suggest uh, ideas for certain personalities and, and incorporate different characteristics. Um, and then, you know, it's just also sort of uh, the magic of flight. I've always loved like what it means and what it feels like and I wanted to absolutely get that into the movie so you become part of the visceral experience when our planes fly it feels like you fly as well so several things like that so give us a line about each of the following characters and the talent that play them Chug okay Chug so Chug is played by Brad Garrett he's really funny he is basically Dusty's sidekick but he's a fuel truck and at first he's sort of his Dusty's coach, but it clearly becomes apparent very early on that he only knows as much as a truck knows about flying. So he passes the buck to Skipper. Dotty. Dotty. You know, Dotty is voiced by Terry Hatcher. She's a great asset to the team. Uh, you know, she's pretty, but she's also really, really smart. And she's a, uh, she's a, she's a, uh, a bit of a tug truck kind of thing, almost a forklift, if you will. And what's also great about her uh, is she knows everything there is to know about aviation and avionics. Deep down, she knows that it's not a good idea for Dusty to race, but she can't help herself to help support him. Skipper? Skipper is the mentor character. He's sort of the, the tough coach, the, the tough love guy. In a lot of ways, he represents my father. In fact, Skipper Riley is his name. My dad's name was Riley. So I'm channeling a little bit of my father through Skipper. Um, and at first he's reluctant to help Dusty, but when he sees deep down sort of the passion that Dusty has um, and what this race really means to him, he gets on board. Ripslinger. Ripslinger is our bad guy. You know, he's the bad guy you love to hate. Who doesn't love hating a really cool bad guy? Ripslinger is the essence of cool. He basically represents the, the current racers that are out there right now as one flies overhead. Uh, he's made of carbon fiber, uh, very powerful, sleek, uh, and he really is the guy that is threatened most by Dusty. You know, uh, he feels that Dusty should just stay on the farm and just do his thing. He doesn't really belong. In fact, he might give the name a bad, he might give the sport a bad name. But the end result is Dusty, even at the very end, Ripslinger can't help himself but change his mind. Our North Canadian racer is, uh, is Rochelle. Um, and she's a lot of fun. She's voiced by Julia Louis-Dreyfus. It's a lot of, she's, what's great about her is, her backstory is she was sort of, uh, uh, you know, she did a lot of cargo and sort of some bush flying for the backlands of the Northwest, but she got soon tired of that and she decided to jump into the racing league. And she's all, she's all serious and focused about racing until she meets El Chupacabra. El Chu. El Chu. I love El Chupacabra, you know, he is our, racing luchador. He's a GB. He's voiced by Carlos Azaraki. Really, really funny character. Many claims to fame, a telenovela star, uh, uh, an indoor racing champion, and a world-famous luchador. Uh, but 
like Dusty, he's never flown around the world in this race. So what's cool about that character is they actually have a bonding experience and they sort of have more common ground than they realize. Ishani. Ishani. She's the Pan-Asian champion. She's probably the most exotic airplane in the race. She's one of the prettiest airplanes to look at also, and she's voiced by Priyanka Chopra, who's also beautiful and gorgeous and exotic, so it was a perfect fit to have her be the voice and, and portray that character. And Bulldog. Bulldog. Bulldog is the legendary John Cleese. Who doesn't love John Cleese? I'm the biggest Van John Cleese, John Cleese fan that ever lived. Um, you know, he was great working with John. He was able to, uh, to incorporate several different aspects of voices to him, and we landed on this old-school RAF pilot that, that flies the de Havilland 88, which is his airplane, and he was just a joy to work with. And, oh, by the way, he's a guy that pushes back. First at Dusty, doesn't think he belongs, but he actually is enamored and changes by Dusty's personality. How cool was yeah. it to bring Val Kilmer and Anthony Edwards back in the skies together? It was so cool to resurrect the team behind Top Gun again as Val Kilmer and Anthony Edwards. We got Goose and Iceman back to, to be Navy Jets again. It was so cool. They, they welcomed the opportunity. And, you know, they have, a, they have a pivotal role in a film where they actually help Dusty when he's in dire straits, he's in trouble to land. They help him actually land on the aircraft carrier. It's a fun sequence. So the movie's really funny and you have a lot of comedians in the movie right was that deliberate that you went out and got so many comedians to take part in it it, it was deliberate i i love stand-up comedy i've been a huge comedian fan my whole life so to be able to get dane cook and and you know gabriel iglesias and Cedric the Entertainer, and Sid Bad, and John Cleese, and Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and even Terry Hatcher, who's hilarious, and several of the other folks that are involved in the cast. Yeah, it was like a dream come true. The film offers a lot of global settings. Can you speak to the locations and the international flavors of the movie? Yeah, the, glo the, the settings are global in this film. You know, we wanted to, we looked for a hurdle to throw in front of Dusty because he was this small town guy that only had flown this limited amount of space. So how cool would it be to actually get him involved in this around the world kind of race and really see what it was like for him to experience all these different cultures, different ethnicities, different colors and, and sights and sounds throughout the world. It was a lot of fun. We had a great time researching those areas and also, uh, you know, we, we changed the musical score in those areas to also support the different feeling and then, and then proper characters to represent the authenticity of the roles. It was just a lot of fun to put that all together. To touch upon the research, there was a lot of research done to make it believable. Yeah, what's great about working with John Lasseter is you got to get the facts right. And by doing that, by getting out there and doing your research, it adds a truth and believability to your film. And it actually elevates the film in so many ways. So we had the opportunity, as I said, we, you know, we went to the Midwest, we went to New York City, we went to uh, Germany, we went to England, we spent time in India around the Taj Mahal and met several, several 20, 30 different pilots. And probably the, the topper of it all was to actually go out to the USS Carl Vinson nuclear-powered aircraft carrier off of the coast of San Diego, spend two days with the men and women of the U.S. Navy and watch the F-18s take off and go. And then we actually ran sequences of our film past the Navy to get the final details correct. So talk about the talented filmmaking team that you've worked with and led at Disney Tune Studios to make this movie. Yeah. You know, I am one that, that will always say that it takes an army of talent to be able to do one of these films, and it certainly is one of the most creative art forms there is, animation. Um, you know, I had a tremendous producer with Tracy Balthazar, and then Ryan Carlson was our art director, and, you know, I had Jason McKinley as our flight specialist, and Sean Batista as another specialist on aviation. Tons of great animators led under Cheryl Sackett and Ethan Hurd, an incredible editorial team led by Jeremy Milton, and the list really just goes on and on. Fantastic music team and music written by Mark Mancina. Um, it could just go on and on and on. But it was, it was an incredible support team that was in very, very uh, talented. So why do you think everybody loves a good un underdog story? Uh, because I think everyone has experienced that at one time in their, <laughs> their life. I know I have. Um, you know, an underdog is a universal, uh, yeah, it's a universal appealing character. It's the little guy that all the odds are st stacked against him and he rises above it all. 
And do you think that's what makes Disney's planes a film for all audiences? I do. I definitely think that that's what makes the movie appeal to universally to all audiences around the world.